Coaches Direct presents Legends of the Game. Learn football fundamentals from the top college coaches in the country. Frank Beamer, Bobby Bowden, John Cooper, Frank Solich, Bob Toledo, Joe Paterno, Boyd Epley, Mac Brown, Philip Fulmer, and Tom Osborne. Tradition. Nowhere does it run deeper in college football than at the University of Texas. The Longhorns began playing football back in 1893, going undefeated in that first season. And in the years that followed, UT has consistently ranked among the nation's best, winning more football games than all but three schools in the entire United States. From the orange jerseys, to the hook'em horns hand signal, to the eyes of Texas fight song, all signifying the deep love and long tradition of University of Texas football. In December of 1997, the Texas tradition took a new turn when the Longhorns hired Mac Brown as their new head coach. In 10 years, Brown turned the North Carolina Tar Heels into a football power, but in his new job, Mac was not about to mess with Texas. Instead, he decided to tap into the deep reservoir of Texas tradition. The results were immediate and amazing. Brown established strong ties with the high school coaches, built a tremendous bond with the lettermen, and in the process gained unbelievable support. Brown's infectious enthusiasm and passion for the game of football had immediate results. First in recruiting, where he has consistently been among the nation's best, and secondly, on the field, as the Texas Longhorns under Mac Brown are once again one of the most feared and talented teams in the nation. The University of Texas has had great players at every position, most notably at running back, where both Earl Campbell and Ricky Williams earned the Heisman Trophy as college football's finest. But the heart and soul of Texas football has been anchored along the offensive and defensive lines, because Longhorn football is personified by power. In this video, Mac Brown and assistant coaches Hardy McCrary and Mike Tollison will teach you the Texas fundamentals for defensive line play. The drills and techniques are the same ones used to develop Longhorn players into college greats and top NFL prospects. Practice these fundamentals and you too can play or coach championship football. Hi, I'm Mac Brown, head football coach at the University of Texas. I'm really excited about being part of this coaches series because we're talking to you young people and you guys are the ones that are going to win the Heisman trophies like Earl Campbell and Ricky Williams in the future. You're going to win the Outland Trophy and, and be tremendous players like Tommy Nobis and Doug English and Scott Appleton, a lot of the guys that have been as good as anyone in America at their position. So when you look at being the best, that's what we feel like the University of Texas is all about. We have eight national award winners. We have 25 consensus All-Americans. We have uh, uh, so many people in the National Hall of Fame, uh, three national championships, so many conference championships at Texas. And uh, we understand this with the tremendous lettermen that we've had in our past, that we understand that we're going to be a young football team this fall, but you also know that tradition never graduates. And that's why we should always be good at the University of Texas. So uh, we look forward to spending a few minutes with you talking about defense and talking about some of the great players in our history that have rushed that passer and tried to stop the run. At the University of Texas, uh, defense has been the word for many, many years. It was started with Coach Mike Campbell, who was one of the best defensive coaches and innovators of pressure defense across the country. Coach Campbell believed many years ago that you lined them up and stopped the run and put pressure on that quarterback and made it very difficult for him to throw the ball. Coach Carl Reese and our defensive staff have the same philosophy. We're going to line up and be very aggressive on defense, very much like the Tommy Nobuses and uh, the Tony DeGreats and uh, Kenneth Samsons of the past because we have had some of the best defensive players ever. So we want to continue with that same philosophy. We want people, when they come, before 80,000 plus people in Royal Memorial Stadium to understand that they're not going to be able to run the football, but they also better get that 
pass in the air real quickly because we're going to have some people coming after them. We've established a play in that front four at the University of Texas. You've got to be a tough guy. And you've got to be a guy that's going to bring your lunch and, and stay there and fight from that first period to that last period. And we like to rotate guys to keep a fresh guy in there because the most important aspect of playing in the front four for us is ball get off. And you'll hear our guys talk about that in a few minutes because if you let the offensive player get the jump on you, you've got absolutely no chance. So we need to get off the ball as quick as we possibly can, and we're going to hug that line of scrimmage. And then we need to attack the guy because in college football, as well as high school football or pro football or junior high football, you've got to stop the run to be successful. If you let a team run the football on you, number one, they beat you down and, and wear you out. Number two, they have tremendous ball control. And if they have possession of the ball a lot more than your offense, you're not giving your offense a fair chance to be successful. And obviously, the more opportunities they have to score, the better chance that they'll uh, score a lot of points on you. So our total philosophy is get the great stance and start, be fundamentally sound, BGO, get off that ball before that offensive guy, have a lot more fight and, and, and stay low. You got to get under his pads to control him, but you have to stop the run. Now, the thing that we want to do is stop the run on first down and make it second long. When you get them in second long and third and long, that's when we like to tee it up and go after that passer because that quarterback doesn't like to have his guys trying to protect when we know they're going to pass. So our philosophy would be simple. You get off that ball quick and you stop the run. You put the, the offensive team in a second long and a third long, and you be as quick out of that stance to get to that quarterback as you possibly can, and you need to let him know that you're going to be back there all day. And really, you can control the game with your front four, and that's what has to be done to be a championship team. We've talked about the tremendous coaches in the past here at the University of Texas, and specifically the defensive coaches like Mike Campbell. You've got a special treat coming up because uh, you're going to hear Mike Tollison, who came to us from LSU. He's coached in the USFL. He's been in some of the best programs in the country and, and under some of the best coaches. He was a defensive coordinator at El Paso. He worked for Lou Holtz at Arkansas and worked for Denny Green at Stanford. Coach Tollison is going to show you exactly what we do in our front four to stop the run. He's going to use the drills that we use at the University of Texas that help our guys become pro players and some of the best defensive players in college football history. After Mike gets through, he's going to turn it over to Hardy McCrary. Hardy's been in this state for 23 years. He was a high school player here. He was a high school coach here. Uh, he was a defensive coordinator at Rice for Ken Hatfield. And, and Hardy has come into the University of Texas and he is teaching our guys how to get off that football and rush that passer. So let's go out to the field right now and start with Mike Tollison on stopping that run and being physical. And after we get those guys in second and third and long, Coach Hardy McCray is going to show you how to get to that quarterback. Blue 28, go, go, go. Oh, I'm Mike Tolly Tollison, the defensive line coach at the University of Texas. And uh, excited about being here today. And I have with me Oscar Giles, a former player here at the University of Texas. Uh, great defensive end that played for us here. Also played uh, several years in the National Football League with the Atlanta Falcons. And the first thing we're going to talk to you about today is, 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 is a stance. The thing that we really stress at, at the University of Texas with our front four is what we call BGO or ball get off. Okay? The first thing we have to establish at the line of scrimmage defensively is we, we, we want to attack and create a new line of, uh, of defense uh, with our front four. And in order to do that, we have to achieve a proper stance. We use a three-point stance, but everything, and the reason we like that, we feel like we can adjust better out of a three-point stance, we have better ball get off out of a three-point stance. But all the fundamentals that we talk about here, with our stance, you could also do, if you're a big four-point stance guy, that, that's, not, that's not a big deal. That's just what, what we believe in. The first thing that we like to do, if, as, as Oscar's demonstrating here, is we like to get our feet slightly shoulder, about shoulder width apart, and we play a toe-to-end step. Okay, a stagger foot back. In, in this case, he's going to be in a right-handed stance. So we want our right foot back. We'll never go any further back than toe to heel because we feel like we'll overstep if we get too big a, too big a stagger. The second thing we do, once we achieve our toes straight up the football field, our heels are slightly out so that all of our power is right through our hips and over our knees, okay, for the proper, proper explosion and punch here. And now in order to get the hand fixed properly on the ground, we go to elbows to our thigh boards. Now, the thing that you got to remember now about a good stance is don't get into it in a hurry, 
Okay, we want to get a good functional stance here. The next thing we like to do is we'll take our right hand in this case and we'll throw it out in front of us, slightly in front of our eyes. Okay, that way it'll keep you from having too much of a bunch stance. Okay, a lot of guys, you know, they'll play where they got their, 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 their hips are down, their eyes are too far up. So the, obviously the first thing that's going to happen to them is they're going to, they're going to uh, play high. So we want the hand slightly out in front of the eyes, flats back, the hips are extended. The, the eyes are slightly up. Don't try to see too much of the guy in front of you. All you're focusing on is whatever your key may be, whether it be the football, the downhand, the near foot of the offensive lineman. That's all we're interested in right now. The next phase of our stance is, is all we talk about is making a weight change. It's making a weight change on our punch. So in this case, when whatever his tip may be, ball or whatever, the first thing he's gonna do and the only thing he's gonna do is take a, a what we call a six inch power step in this case with the right foot. So on movement here, if my foot is his key, when I move my foot, boom, he takes, he takes a step and that's it. And every drill we do, we have something to focus on. I don't just, we just don't say set, hike, go. We got something to look at. So that our defensive linemen always know that they have a primary key to tip their move. A lot of guys, coaches, you hear coaches talking about, son, your first step, your shoulders are coming up. The reason for that, just go ahead and make a, make a good long step here, Oscar, and hold it. If you overstride or overstep, that has a tendency to bring your shoulders up and you play high. Plus, you lose your base. So, again, all we're talking about here then is just a good six-inch power step and roll out of your stance, boom, and throw your hands and so forth. And that's, that's, that, that's the reason we like this, this stance, and that's the reason we don't stagger any further than we do. If you have your feet, give me a deep stagger now, Oscar. If you have your foot back too far, even though you're still trying to get a base, you're, you're having to come too far. And again, relax, relax, Oscar, that's good. Again, what we're talking about here now is run defense, okay? Now, we'll, we'll change our stance a little bit, and you'll hear about that later on when we start rushing the passer. Talking about pass rush, we'll, we'll change our stance a little bit. But all we're doing right here now is we're just trying to get a nice functional stance where we can make a weight change. We're just trying to shift our weight through our hips and legs in order to punch and throw our hands in play from there. One more time, that's a good looking stance right there. And on movement, he'll take a nice, that's perfect, that's a good job. It's we have to be able to play out of both hands. We'll play right-handed stances, we'll also play left-handed stances. And if you'll just assume a left-handed stance for me there, Oscar, go ahead and sit. It's the same procedure, everything's exactly the same. And as you see right here, he's got his left hand down now, but the operation is exactly the same as a right-handed stance. And he's always got his strike hand ready to strike. We don't want that hand up here. we has got to bring it so far, okay? We want that hand where he can, you can punch. I mean, he's right there ready to come off and punch. And remember to throw your hands because that's going to play twofold for you. Throwing the hands is going to help keep your shoulders down. And it's going to help get you momentum going on your punch. There it is right there. So we're getting ready to strike uh, out of our stance after we make our weight change. Now from here, what we'd like to do is take you over to our sled and show you our progression now, how we go now with, with the quick hands, and then we'll evolve into a power step, power reach step, and our escape as we go. But once we come out of our stance and start drill, uh, we go to what we call our quick hand session. All, right? All we're stressing here is how quick we can get our hands on the opponent. And again, just like in a stance, Oscar, all his eyes are doing a riveting on my foot. Okay, and he's seeing how quick he can come. Now, again, he's in a six point position, head on the bag because we're gonna throw our eyes as well as our hands. And we're really stress the lockout. And you see right here, Oscar's got his elbows locked as he punches. All right, extend one more time, Oscar. Boop, a hole, stick. If he, if he winds up with his elbows flexed too much, that means the offensive guy is too close to him and is more than likely going to get a hold on him and can't get off the block. So we want to really stress lockout, hands in close once we explode. Last one. Perfect. Outstanding. The next phase of our, our block protection segment, again, now we're back to our stance and we're, we're teaching power, quick hands, one step. Here we go. Again, now this time we'll use we'll use a different different key. I'm actually the center. Whoop. Again, 
as, as Oscar as Oscar steps right here, again, all he's thinking about is a weight change. One power step, quick hands. Back straight, eyes at the top of the bag. Boop. Now freeze right there, that's good. Now as you can see right here, this bag is locked down. It, it doesn't roll, it doesn't extend because what we're trying to get here again is off our, our weight shift, our hands and power step, flat back, punch, eyes riveted. Again, everything is, is hands, hips, feet as we come out of our stance. One more time. Let's go, let's go left-handed stance this time. It's the exact same progression this time out of a left-handed stance. Again, his eyes are riveted on his key. Hoop. One more time. That's good. Hoop. Good. That's a good job right there. 28, blue 28. Cool, cool. Hoop. All right, the next phase of our progression is, is again, stance, power step, quick hands. But now we're going to bring our up foot up along with the power step, which we call our, our, our reed step. Get up just a little bit on the ball here. Okay, on, on this one, I like to go back to the foot so I can see the, the, the power step along with the reed step. See, hoop, hoop. That's good right there. See, again, now, now we're bringing the other foot with us. Right hand stance. Hoop. See, hoop. Now the final phase of our, our uh, run block protection segment is the escape. And, and again, we our defensive line, we do these drills every day, okay? And we've already had the stance. We've had the quick hands, we had the power step, re-step. So from on this drill, we, we're already in what we refer to as a perfect fit, okay? In this case, Oscar is into the offensive lineman and he's got him controlled. Now I want to get off of him. All right, and the things that we do, and I, and Oscar do this as we go, we're going to come off to uh, escape off to our right in this case. Our right arm is going to be power arm, our right hips through, and then we're going to literally wheel off the bag, okay? A common mistake that a lot of young defensive linemen make is they, as they try to escape, they try to rip, okay, or they try to swim. Those things are fine in pass rush. Show me a swim, Oscar. All right, as you can see, if you're trying to escape off of a run block, you're exposing your body too much with a swim. And if you try a rip, oh, right there. The good offensive linemen, all they'll do is clamp down and pull you down to the ground and you can't get off of them. So therefore, we call what we refer to as a wheel technique. It's like the wipe on, wipe off, if you will. A little martial arts involved. That's a good job, Oscar, one more time. And we'll work this drill right and left off of our escapes so that we are literally clubbing the offensive man off of our body as, as we run to the football. Again, here, here he goes when he's ready because the key has already been established. The ball get off has already taken place. And from here, what we talk about, the ball's the issue. I'm off the guys trying to block me. Now I'm in hot pursuit to the guy carrying the football. And we're going to try to arrive there in a real bad disposition. Again, as we shed and release, Power arm, right arm, hip through, wheel, and go make a play. I'm Hardy McCrary, the defensive end coach at the University of Texas, and uh, Coach Tollison's done a great job showing you our run techniques. I'm going to expand that into our pass rush techniques. Also going to be using Oscar Giles, who you've already met, and we're also going to uh, get some good help out of Tom Herman, who played at Cal Lutheran and who is one of our offensive assistant coaches. Okay, as we approach the pass rush part of the segment here, there's three things today we want to emphasize. Coach Tollison has already talked about the stance. We'll come back and show you a slight adjustment when it is a pass rush situation. So we're here today to emphasize BGO or ball get off is the most important thing in pass rush at the University of Texas. The second thing is the use of hands, hand escape and hand placement. The third thing is body angles. So today in our drills and in our schemes, that's what we'll try and emphasize today on those three things. What we're gonna talk about first is the stance. In a pass rush situation, we're gonna use the basic stance that Coach Tollison already described and taught you, but we will make some slight adjustments on a rush call or in a long yarded situation. The number one thing is we tell the player to get comfortable in a stance where he can get his first two steps upfield as quick as possible off of total ball movement. We turn our eyes in slightly towards the football so that we've got a great view of the football because we want, when the football flinches, we have got to be a part of that. The second thing is 
we will allow the rusher to elongate his stance somewhat. You'll see his drop foot back here drop back a little bit so that he can lengthen his stride. His tail will also come up in the air slightly. In some cases, he might move his front hand a little bit further so that the stance is more elongated so that as soon as the football flinches or the offensive lineman flinches, we want to be upfield with two steps as quick as possible. At the University of Texas, we use a small ball that is brightly colored to reinforce the focus on the football. That's the number one and most important thing in pass rush is getting off on the ball. We call it BGO. But the number one drill we start with every day and can't get enough reps onto this is our ball get off drill right here. We get in the pass rush stance right here. We're getting great ball movement and we're trying to get as low as we can through the shoots with a good base. You can notice Oscar's tail's up in the air. He's got his foot back and he's rolling off the ball. We emphasize totally look at the football in a pass rush situation. 28, blue 28, go, go, go. Okay, the next progression here is our hoop drills. And our hoop drills here, we're trying to emulate coming off the corner, learning to run with body lean, dipping that shoulder, and getting on the edge of a tackle, and getting the feeling with both the right and left shoulder of coming off the edge and turning the corner at the quarterback. As we can see Tom there with his ball get off, emulating the edge, running the edge of the offensive lineman, turning the corner, and one of the most important parts is the finish right there for the sack of the quarterback. The second part of the progression here is for the rusher to get the sensation of leaning against the offensive tackle right here. So I will apply pressure as Oscar comes off the corner. Oscar, you can go on your own. So that he gets the sensation of the lean right there of getting that shoulder down. Here we go, we've got Tom doing the same thing with the other shoulder tightness to the hoop, getting that shoulder down, getting that shoulder down and finishing strong. The, the third progression here is the cat and the rat where we're in a chase situation where we're still running the hoops and then we change directions and the chase goes on. And we're learning to run the hoops, dipping that shoulder. All right, what, what we're emulating here in, in the last pass rush drill is the use of hands. We're going to try and slap the offensive tackle's hand down, get our hips through, and push off with the other hand, and then square back up and go to the next man in our, in our pop-up drill. Notice Oscar is getting his hips through, leading with his lead hand, and making his backhand work. Notice it starts with the good ball get off, getting your hips through, lead with the front hand, and make the backhand work. All right, nice job. A little bit tighter with the backhand. Get your hips through. There we go. The, the most important part of this drill right here is beat the set. It's just beating the offensive lineman out of his stance, getting a great twitch off the football right here. You see Oscar in his pass rush stance right here with his butt up in the air, turning a corner and exaggerating the rip technique. This, like all of our drills, we're working in a right and a left-handed stance with the offensive tackle just trying to beat us to the set. We're trying to beat him off the ball and out of his stance close with the rip to the quarterback. Great ball get off. We beat the corner right there and then we turn and cover up for a play downfield with a big man hit. 28, blue 28, go, go, go. All right, we're looking for the overset by the tackle and here's where we counter and come inside close to the quarterback and then we try and cover up downfield. Now we're going to take you inside and show you some pass rush games on our chalk talk. At the University of Texas, uh, Coach Tollison and I uh, 
and Coach Reese, our defensive coordinator, we believe in using games up front really for two reasons. One, to take advantage of pass protections, different protections, and secondly, to disrupt the draw game. But one of the most important components of pass rush is we must maintain lane integrity. As we have here on the diagram, this would be a base pass rush lane integrity where the two ends are responsible for contain. They've got to stay on the upfield or outside shoulder of the quarterback threat. The two inside rushers have got to be your A, B gap rushers. They must be in the face of the quarterback and be in the inside draw lanes. Therefore, when you run these pass rush games, you must switch these responsibilities. The tackles have to take the ends responsibilities, the ends have to take the tackles responsibilities, and still maintain the four rush lanes that are required to be successful in rushing the passer and stopping the draw game. Our first game is a, is a tech stunt, and the tech stunt, you know, quite commonsensically is the, the tackle will go first in a tech stunt. Once again, the tackle is going to rely on great ball get off. He's coming off the line, takes a short jab step to, to make him believe he's an upfield rusher, and then he is going to push towards the face of the tackle. He cannot be, be uh, pinned by the tackle because now he's becoming the contained rusher. He and the end basically are trading lane responsibilities. Now the end's job is to start up field to draw the tackle's block, and now as he, as he starts up field and the tackle clears, he's coming off the tail of the tackle reading the set of the guard. If the guard's eyes come on him, he's coming inside into the A lane. If the guard's butt goes down, he's now coming off the tail of the butt, and he is the AB gap rusher. So well, now we have simply changed rush responsibilities but tried to disrupt the pass protection. On our end now, the end is going first. The end will, will start with a 45 degree step upfield, once again reading the tackle, and he's coming down inside to be the AB gap rusher. Now the tackle's job is as the end's was, he must get up in the line and draw the block but not be pinned and now come off the rear end of the end, and now he's also pushing for contain right here. Once again, take advantage of pass protections, and secondly, disruption of the draw, so they're both good second and third long down calls. Okay, our combination package rushes are called mix-its, and on a mix-it now we'll get a four-man game going as opposed to the two-man game going. This is once again a great third down call, second down long yardage call, and once again great for the screens and the draws trying to turn our defensive line loose. So on a mix it, we will run a tex on the strong side with the three technique pushing for contain, the end upfield trying to draw the tackles block, coming underneath the guard. On the split end side, now we, we will run an exit where the end now goes first, reading the guard, guard's eyes come on him, he comes underneath, guard's rear goes down, he comes off the tail. The tackle pushes up field trying to draw the guard block, comes off the end's rear and pushes for contain. As you can see, gives pass protection problems and definitely uh, can deter the draw blocking schemes that we see both in, in all levels of football. That would be a mix it for us. So you've seen two two-man games and now one four-man game that we use extensively here at the University of Texas. All right, tying, tying everything together now, we were talking about it out on the field as far as base technique, uh, uh, proper stance, and so on. We're going to get right into the meat and potatoes now about what we do against the run defensively. Our philosophy at the University of Texas is we like to feature a front that, that is an odd or a bubble look, the old 50 front, if you will, to one side with a split look or an even look uh, to the other side. Okay, so that you've always got a five technique or a three technique, depending on which way you want to go with the front. And in order to do that, so that we're not always dictating, <clears throat> that offenses are not always dictating to us that, that they know where we're going to be, where we're going to be setting and try to attack that particular look, Stem is big in our package, okay, as far as run, the run scheme is concerned. So in other words, we may show an even look to one side, in this case to the call side, and just like most defenses, we call the tight end 
or two receiver side to strength most of the time in, in rundown situations. And the side away from the call, for example, this could be a left. The side opposite the call then uh, uh, would be the bubble look. The side to the call is a split. So you got a three technique, five technique. If we want it just reversed, okay, we want to show split odd, and then we slide the front prior to snap. Now, <clears throat> we don't have a trigger term where the linebacker says move or anything like that. We all, we've always found that, that a deep, one of the defensive linemen has a little better feel than another possibly. Now, you, again, that's the way we do it. So when one of the kids has the feel that it's time to slide, he kind of pulls everybody with him. So going back up here, for example, the three technique moves inside. Uh, shade, the inside shade kicks out to the three. Uh, the five technique loosens up. That, the nine techniques come, that comes down to five. So this, this front on, on stem becomes this front, okay? So now then we've just, we've wound up, again, if we're, if we're getting a lot of draw scheme on the run, trap game, midline, whatever the offense is trying to do to us, we, we can do that on, 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 uh, prior to snap. Now then, if the quarterback comes up and he goes first sound, and the worst thing that you can have your, your down guys do is stem too fast. If they stem too soon, this guy still has time to see what just happened and, and, and still check to another player or make his audible. So we want them to stem as late as they can. Our kids know that their fail safe is this. Their eyes are on the football anyway. Okay? If, if they don't get stemmed before the ball is snapped, the quarterback comes up and goes, sit, and the ball snapped, then they hit everything on the move or they slant to their work, if you will, so it, which a lot of times is better anyway. So they just get to their work on the move, but they still know that they've got to wind up uh, in, in the opposite gap from, from previous alignment uh, once the ball is snapped. Big coaching point here now is any time that you are, are stemming or moving or slanting your front, you've still got to remember now that we're a gap control defense, okay? Everybody's responsible for a gap. So we've got to be sure we get there. That's why if, if we're hitting on a slant, we've got to read the guy that we're slanting to so we can see what he's doing so we don't get pinned or walled off and, and wind up having a guy short, okay? So, for example, again, we, we letter our gaps like the center guard gaps, A gap, guard tackle, B gap, tackle, tight end, C, outside, D, and so forth on both sides. So that, again, our, our guys know that if, I, if I'm going from a B gap to an A gap responsibility, I've got to get there. The linebacker knows that if he's sliding from an A gap to a B gap, he's got to stack and be there. So again, that, that the whole defense is coordinated against the run, and we've got a chance to be successful with our work. Okay, and again, in the process of, 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 of slanting or hitting, hitting our technique on the move, if I'm coming from an outside shade of the guard to the outside shade of the center, as I start my move movement, my eyes are now go to the center, okay? If his eyes are off of me, I'm coming off his hip, and that's what we call pumping the seam, flatten out and looking to make a play. If his eyes come on me, I'm going to butt him, face him up, and then cross face. I don't want to try to get up skinny up here because, again, the backer's trying to counter. He's trying to get, get in the opposite gap. All we're doing is just like you. Uh, we, we've heard talking in pass rush, exchange pass rush lanes and two-man games and so on and so forth. You're, you're, you're exchanging gaps of responsibility in the run game on movement. Here at the University of Texas, that's been really big for us in rundown, rundown defenses, and it gives our kids a, a tool. We, we talk about having a tool belt. You know, you always got to have a tool that you can reach out and use when you need it, and that's a tool that we can go to if, 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 if we want a little bit out of sync, a little bit out of rhythm maybe. Uh, the, uh, the offense is moving the ball. We can't really find something to put our hands on. They're doing a nice job. Bam, here we go. Now we've got a way that we can show one thing, move to another, or even slant to it, if you will, if they want to try to come up and go on first sound. But again, this is what's been good. one of the things that's been good to us, and uh, and I hope hopefully uh, uh, you play with it a little bit. I mean, you can you can go on and on with it as far as the different change ups, the different slants, the different stunts you can run off of it. But again, this this is just a couple of things that's been really good to us here at the University of Texas. And again, thank you very much for your time, and I hope you get something out of it. Hey, blue twenty eight, go go. Woo. We're continuously talking about explosive power, especially in the in the defensive line. As you can see illustrated on the wall behind me here, that's, that's a big pride thing we talk about here, having the ability to come off the ball attack and have some leverage and power uh, along with our techniques and fundamentals. And in, to, in order to do that, we have to spend a lot of time in a room like this. This has got uh, 
uh, all the modern equipment that we need for our guys to come in here and work to get stronger in the lower body, the upper body as far as explosion and push-pull power with the, uh, with the arms and shoulders. And that's where I'd like to go to next. I'd like to show you a drill that we do here at the University of Texas with our defensive linemen to, to ex, uh, really stress push upper body power with leverage to get ex extension and separation so we can uh, execute our escape move. The, the purpose of this drill, again, is, is to uh, produce separation and, and escape off a potential offensive blocker. In order to do this, again, we talk about perfect fit. We've already had our stance and start, and we already uh, assumed the position defensively that, that, we, that we're uh, working to get. Okay, now obviously that is hands inside uh, uh, the offensive lineman's hands. Okay, and now we want to have leverage in the lower body. And as the offensive guy tries to position us one way or the other, we're going to counter with a push as he's trying to pull, and then we're going to come back with an escape. And that's the escape part of it. The position we want to assume here is, is the perfect fit position. As a defensive player, Oscar is the defensive player in this case. He wants his hands inside the offensive lineman. Okay, the offensive lineman now is going to try to get position. He's going to try to get leverage on Oscar. Oscar, therefore, is going to counter with a push as the offensive lineman's trying to pull. Now, when we execute this drill, we go right, left, right, and then execute the escape. And then we'll come right back and re re uh, reverse the procedure so that we're getting an escape off both sides of the offensive lineman. And as you see, they ready up every time. They ready up every time. Good job, Oscar, coming back. Again, the whole, the whole key to this drill now is don't try to make it a rapid fire drill. Again, everything we're doing in, in, in our progression of block protection with the defensive line is that we're constantly working on fundamentals and technique, getting, getting the technique down to the push and the pull. One more time. Let's go the other way now, okay? Yeah, you're going to start your... There we go. All right, ready back up. Again, we're not trying to get in a hurry. Just get position. Get position. The offensive lineman executes, then we counter. Now we want to escape to the other side. The ball's the issue, go make a play. Good job, excellent. And again, the, the one thing here again that we want to emphasize on all of these drills as we finish off a potential block, the ball now becomes the issue. Go make the play. Get the guy, carry the football on the ground with a nasty disposition. Now we want to show you three different pass rush moves. These three moves are based on reading the set of the offensive lineman. The whole basis, as we talked about outside, is threatening the man with BGO, with speed on the outside, but also reading the set of the offensive lineman while not slowing down, using his body weight against him. The first one, the first one deals with a set, an inside set by an offensive lineman, where he is going to set heavy inside, protect inside, and I'm reading that he is on the inside of my number. So as I threaten upfield and he sets, and I notice that he's setting inside, I want to reach for that hand as we did outside and as we talked about hand movement, pull that shoulder down, look for the soft shoulder, and now get my feet and shoulders past the blocker and accelerate to the quarterback. If he goes to overset on me to prevent my speed from the outside, then we come with a counter rip. On the counter rip, one of the true coaching points is we must threaten him upfield enough to get his body and hips open. And now, grabbing with a hand with our explosive power, using his body weight against him, rip and come open and finish the sack. And the third and final technique is the bull rush which involves a butt and separate technique. Once again, when the offensive lineman is trying to deep set us, we're going to use his body weight against him to sack the quarterback or apply pressure. So I come off the football with my great BGO. I'm threatening him with speed, but when I recognize that the offensive lineman has given me a deep set, I'm now going to turn into him, explode with my face and hands off a lead foot, play with leverage, and drive him and his body weight into the quarterback, producing the sack or the pressure from a collapsed pocket. I want to emphasize once again that we only use three pass rush techniques at the University of Texas. 
The first one, number one and no question, is BGO is built on speed. Coming off the corner. We're going to create coming off the corner. Then if they use their body weight to try and stop that, we're going to counter and come underneath. And third, if they deep set on us and try and take away our speed rush, we'll turn it into a physical game and go with the bull rush. Hopefully you've gotten those three techniques down and you can work on those. At this time, I'd like to bring Oscar and Tom in and thank them for their hard work today and let you young guys out there know that through this hard work that Coach Tollison has taught you, that Coach Brown has talked about in my techniques, that you too can become a fine football player that has a great experience in the game. There are a lot of different reasons a young guy would choose to play football. It may be to win the Heisman Trophy like a Ricky Williams or an Earl Campbell. It might be to be part of a national championship team like a lot of the guys here at the University of Texas have been fortunate enough to, to be part of. But it may be just because you like the game. And it may be because it's fun and it's competitive. Probably the reason I would encourage you to play football are because of all the lessons that you learn. Football develops great character. I'm a guy that had some knee operations. I'm a guy that was on some losing teams and, and even as a young coach lost a lot of football games. But it's still been worth it to me. You learn when you get knocked down to get back up. You learn how to compete and try to do the best that you can do to win, but not at all costs because you stay within the rules. You learn how to delay some of that individualism you have as a youngster to be part of a group and part of a team. And you learn what teamwork's all about. You learn how special it is to be excited with a group when that group has done everything they need to be to, to win the game and be successful in that dressing room after the game. You learn how tough it is after a loss in that dressing room when everybody feels bad and, and everybody feels like they let each other down. But maybe more than anything else, you learn how to gain self-confidence and walk with your head up because you've overcome a lot of things that may not have anything to do with being the best guy on the team or the best guy in the league or the best guy in the country. It may have more to do with being the best that you can be because that's what you're trying to do is develop your personality and set your goals as high as you can, but goals that you can reach for the rest of your life. As we talk about football at the University of Texas, all of those things are very important, but we also want our guys to have a good time. We have fun at practice. We have fun in that dressing room after wins. We regroup and get ready to compete after losses. But we want our guys to learn how to speak publicly and we want them to get their uh, resumes in line and, and get ready for life after football because we think that's what football teaches the guys. And we think if you will look at these videos and you will participate in football and you'll give it everything you've got and you'll listen to your great coaches that are out there across the country, you'll be far ahead of the other young guys that didn't participate in football when it's time for you to go make a living and help lead your family with the values that hopefully your coaches and your family have given you. I was very lucky to be raised in a family where Eddie Jelly Watson, my grandfather, is the winningest high school football coach in Middle Tennessee history. So I grew up with a great respect for my granddad as a role model, as a granddad, and my father who was a coach and a, a principal and then superintendent in the school business, but I also grew up understanding that these were the type men that I wanted to look for for, for help. And then all of a sudden as, as a young coach I started trying to figure out if I wanted to coach or not. I started to be an attorney. But when I looked at the Tom Osborns and the Joe Paternos and the Bobby Bowdens and all of those guys out there that were reaching out and touching young people, that's why I decided to coach. Steve Sloan told me one time, don't coach unless you're obsessed with coaching. Don't coach unless you just have this need to try to reach out and help young people. And I think that's probably what separates the guys that make it in this business from the other guys because you have to sincerely want to reach out and help the young people. So as a young coach, I used to go to every spring practice I could uh, attend. I would sit and listen to every coach that I respected in the world. And I think my grandfather gave me the gift of respect for those who have done it and those who have done it within the rules. Because we at the University of Texas, like all the coaches, feel that if you're not doing it by the rules,
then you're really not being successful. So the thing I would say is find that role model and watch him very closely. Find the guy that you feel like you want to be like and go to him and learn from him. And we have great high school coaches in the state of Texas. Many of them could be head coach at the University of Texas. We have tremendous middle school, junior high coaches in the state of Texas. And we're all so lucky to have them teaching the young guys before they get to this level that it helps our job so much. But I would think that um, as I speak to you, we have a real need for character and guys who love this game and guys who want to teach because so many of the families across the country are broken now and we're finding that we need extensions of that family in football. I feel like there's three things that I love about football. The number one thing is being in the dressing room with a group of guys that have overcome adversity and won a big game even maybe if somebody thought we weren't supposed to win it and, it, and it's even better if it's on the road because that's tougher and then you can get on that plane together as a staff and a team and come home with that feeling of joy and accomplishment and, and then have 10,000 crazy Longhorn fans meet you at the airport. Now, I feel like that's good stuff. The second thing I would say that I enjoy so much, uh, I really enjoy our staff meetings because I like being around our coaches and many of them are friends of mine and, and I like to, to talk to them about what they feel like they got accomplished and, and, and being in that staff meeting with uh, talking personnel about what we can do to help excite this young guy because he has a lot of ability but he's not getting there yet. And the third thing I would say that I probably enjoy the most hearing from the ex-players that come back and, and, and maybe even their experience wasn't as good as they thought at the time because we had to be tough on them and, and make some hard decisions for them. But to have them call back and say, Coach, I remember 10 years ago you jumped me about this and it's probably the best thing for me uh, to, to have grown up at that time that's ever happened to me in my life. And I think those would be the three things that I enjoy the most about coaching. We at the University of Texas are very flattered to be part of this great video series because there's so many tremendous coaches that are trying to help you learn more about the game of football. The thing that we know is football has been very good to us and we're really happy and we love the game and, and we enjoy every day of the game. Understanding there's some crisis but we've learned how to take those crises and turn them into positives through football. Outside of the military, probably football gives you the best lessons in life about trying to learn the team concept and trying to do some things maybe that you don't want to do every day that are really best in the long run for you to be successful. So the thing I would ask you to do is I would ask you to find those role models that you want to look up to because they're happy and they're living the life that you would like to live and you can learn from them and go study those guys. Because whether it's a young player out there or it's a young coach out there, we all have a responsibility to make sure that we leave this great game better than we found it when we decide to move on. Thank you for being part of our series. I hope you've enjoyed this tape by Mac Brown and his assistants. Uh, Mac, of course, has had great success uh, at the University of North Carolina and most recently at the University of Texas. And uh, he's uh, an experienced, knowledgeable coach and, of course, has great, uh, great insight into the area of defense. And so I hope very much that you enjoyed what uh, Mac and his coaches had to offer in the way of defensive line play. This Legends of the Game video is one in a series of instructional tapes made for coaches, athletes, parents, and fans of the game of football. There are a total of 10 tapes available covering all aspects of football. We sought out the best coaches in the country in order to produce top quality instructional tapes. If you would like to order additional videos or receive more information about the Legends of the Game series, call 800-230-3831 or write us at Coaches Direct in Lincoln, Nebraska. You may also fax us at area code 402-465-8849 or you can visit us on our website at www.coachesdirect.com. Thank you for your interest in the game of football.